Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, My Quilt Planner, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, and Word Art and Stitches. Tonight's webinar features our My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, and my quilt planner. So get ready. We have a wonderful team tonight assisting us. Dory, Nancy R, Chris L, Kate A, and I would like to introduce you to our inspiration consultant, Tamara Evans, our stitch picking Tamara. So with <laughs> no further ado, pick away Tamara. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Uh, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, tonight's topic is all about backdrops. And as Dory mentioned, we are going to go through each of the three quilting programs and show you what backdrops can do for you. It's a very powerful tool if you know what it can do. So I want to start with my quilt embellisher because really in that program we have the full scope of backdrop capabilities whereas in block piecer and quilt planner they're a little um, limited may be the word not limited but they don't have the full functionality that we do in quilt embellisher. Okay so I have brought up my screen. Um, I don't I just have a blank screen with design one ready to go. Backdrops are located right here on the uh, left-hand side of the screen where it says backdrop tool. If I click on that, it defaults to my images folder. And let me show you where that is. You don't have to go there to do it, but it is in Windows um, on your C drive, in your dime folder, images. The same dime folder that holds your designs that are in your library when uh, you select a design from there, images holds images. Now if I want to go somewhere else to find an image, I certainly can do that. This is just a convenience for us. Um, so we'll just leave it on images. And images that we can pull up as a backdrop are the artwork elements that are eh, not so great. Uh, if you listen, if you've listened to any of the Perfect Embroidery Pro webinars that Catherine does so well, uh, she talks a lot in there about images and different types of image files. The images that we use with backdrops are raster images. Um, raster, they're kind of ratty. They're they're pixelated. Um, I shouldn't say ratty, but that's how I remember it. Uh, they're pixelated. So if I bring one up. Um, and let's just pick an image like, oh, I have some blocks already loaded here, quilt blocks. Open it up. And this is some that I just downloaded off the internet. Uh, I'll pick one of those and open it. You see how when we scroll in, you can see that the, the color isn't clean and how pixelated this is. Um, that is a raster image. Now, the larger the image, the better the result is going to be. And let me show you. I'm just going to jump over down here at the bottom of my screen. Um, I have some quilt blocks. I, I went into Google and searched quilt block images, I believe was my search. At, well, quilt blocks, and then selected up here at the top, images. So I think in most, this is the search engine I use for the most part. Um, you may use something different, but it should allow you to look at just the images. So I'll go through here and I'll find things that I really like. And if you hover over it, you can see right here, when I hover over this, it tells me down at the bottom the size of it. This one is 241 by 241 pixels. Yeah, that's not very big. Um, I like to find larger ones. This is 300 by 300. That's still quite small, which is not unusual when you're looking for images on the computer, especially if they're on a website. They won't use a great big image because it takes too long for that to load. 
So they will scale it down because you can only see so many pixels in an area on your computer screen. But we really want to use images that have a higher pixel count than that. 300. Now this one here is 1,000 by uh, 1,023. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And it's got fabric in it. Um, and I will just right click and save that image as. Um, and I like to leave the name in it if I can. So maybe if I go back and search that, I can find where it came from. I don't advocate stealing other people's work. But this, in this case, is, um, I believe that's kind of like an Ohio store. It's a little bit different um, because it's very scrappy, or else the fabric is done that way. But I have a feeling, no, I can see seam allowances here. Um, they piece that together, which is kind of cool. But I just want to show you what the image looks like. Now, we'll close out of that and come back to our screen. I'm going to use my undo because this image is really not going to work for my purposes because it is only, well, it's less than two inches. And if I make it any larger so I can see it better, it's just going to get worse. So uh, now there are ways to deal with these, and we'll do that in another webinar. Um, in fact, the one in, I believe it's July. Is that correct, Dory, when we do the quilt block challenge? We're going to take images yeah. that you can't, OK, good, thank you. Uh, images that you can't really um, make out well and take something like this and create a block with it. But I'll show you how to do that. That'll be in my block piece or in July. OK, so let's just undo and get rid of this backdrop. And I'm going to go back to my backdrops folder. And here's that scrappy rainbow um, uh, Ohio star. I think that is, or Friendship Star, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm going to open that. Now when this one comes up, if I look over to my Properties box in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see the width and the height of this block. It's um, almost square. You can't adjust like you can with other artwork. You can't change the proportions. It's going to stay proportional. You can resize it. So if I wanted this block to be 12 inches, I could put in 12 here. But it's going to resize it proportionally and click Apply. Now, um, this would be great to look at if I'm just going to decorate over the top of it. It would give me a nice, fairly clean image, although you can see it's kind of cut off a little bit at the corners. Um, what I would recommend, if you are going to do decorate a quilt block or a quilt, uh, take a photograph of it. Because then you can save that file as a JPEG, as a raster file, which includes JPEGs and PNG files. JPEG is a .jpg uh, PNG file. Um, uh, bitmap file, BMP, those type of files are raster images that don't scale really nicely. You see if you scroll in here, you can see the pixels. They're pixelated. So let's look at the other things before we change our backdrop here that we can do with this. Uh, I brought the image up. It gives me what the measurement is, so we could certainly resize it. You can also just click on a corner and drag it. Um, and fit it to your, your grid if you choose to do that. And you notice how the image is underneath the grid. Okay, so it's just a backdrop. It's a picture. It has no characteristics. If we look in our sequence view, we don't see anything. Okay, there's no elements to this. It's just a picture in the background for us to go by. Uh, we can scale it using a percentage if we choose to do that rather than an actual measurement. And I'm right over here in my properties box. Uh, we can rotate it either 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or we could put in an exact number there to rotate it by. And we can make it darker or lighter and apply that. So if we want it to be very light in the background, I usually keep mine at darker. Um, because I'm using it to see something. But sometimes I want to make it a little bit lighter so it doesn't conflict with what I'm doing on the screen on top of it. 
Now, one other thing I want to show you that applies to backdrops is over here on the left-hand side. This is your backdrop control where you can hide the backdrop. You click on that and it disappears. Click on it again and it shows it to you. So if you're doing some decorating or if you're trying to make this into a quilt block and using artwork to create these triangles and squares and such, then you can turn it off and on just so you can see what you're doing. So that comes in very handy. So you can see just what's on the screen and what you've completed versus what's in the background. Okay, now let's move on. I'm going to open up another file and show you another place that Backdrop is used. If we go to our quilt block library up here, um, right here in the top, almost top uh, left-hand corner, and select a block and bring it in. We'll just click any one of these. I'll do honeybee. And of course, you can select your size. And it's important that you select your size if you want to backdrop the size of your block. So if you want to do a custom size of, of um, 7.5, and click OK. This comes in as 7.5. If I turn off my colors here oh, and turn on my backdrop, my backdrop is still at, oh, it didn't change it, um, sorry, it's still at 8, uh, at a size of 8. So what we would have to do is select our backdrop tool and then we can come in and change that to 7.5 on the backdrop tool. So as I go through and decorate this block, and we'll turn the items back on, I can still see my backdrop underneath. Okay. Um, so if I select it and let's, I'll take what, just so you can see a little bit here, I'm going to select the pink color and convert that to stippling and turn up uh, Oop, let's make it pink, sorry, instead of white. I was thinking ahead in my mind. Let's just make it red since we have red. So now I can see it on the backdrop. The same with the blue. We'll change the blue to stippling or um, another option. Just select one. And now if I look at that in 3D, I can still see the color behind it. The white's kind of hard to see, of course, but I can still see the color behind it. If I turn off my backdrop, I'm not going to see that color in the background. So that's um, with your quilt block library. You can create or show or hide the backdrops that uh, come in with the block and resize them. Now let's take it an, another look at a backdrop and I will select my backdrop tool and come into my folders and actually the one I want to use isn't in my quilt blocks. I was trying to organize myself a little bit which is sometimes more of a challenge. Uh, <laughs> let's go to this star block right here and I have two different ones. This one which is a JPEG and it's 1300 by 1288 pixels. Um, I'm going to open it and there you see that it's kind of wonky. There's a couple of things we can do to correct images in here, the backdrop images. If you take a photograph of something, and this is the way I would photograph, it would be crooked, um, it, but I could bring it up and I can straighten it up very easily by coming over underneath my toolbar here, or my icon for backdrops, there's an arrow. And when I click that, I have two options. One is to define the horizon. Well, if you think about what the horizon is, it's what is horizontal in this, or what should be horizontal in this picture. So I'm going to define that. It gives me a little plus sign there. I can come across and click on the top edge if I want to, to define that horizon. And you notice it straightened that right up for me. I could have gone from this point to this point. You could do whatever is easiest to find in that block that makes it straight. Now, when we look at this, we can tell that that's pretty straight because it lines up with, with our grid. I'm going to turn the grid off at this 
point because those lines get in my way. And I want to look at my block. And the properties of this backdrop, if over here in the top right-hand corner, let me move this out of the way a little bit, down there. There we go. So here are my properties. It is 9.09 .09 inches by 9.02 inches. Now it's in inches, of course, because I have my ruler here set up as inches. If you want to switch to metric, remember, all you have to do is click on it. And now look, I'm in metric over here and metric on my ruler. But that really scares me, so I go back to inches as quickly as I can. Um, but if you need to work in metric, you certainly can do that. Now, this is not the size of my block. It is the size of the white space around my block. Let me show you how we can see that a little bit easier. I'm going to change my backdrop just to a, my screen to just a slight gray. Okay, so you see the white space here. That's my, um, that's part of my backdrop, which is included in this measurement. So what I need to figure out is how big my block's going to be, because this is very important to how I'm going to decorate it. If I decorate it at this size, it may or may not fit on my actual block. So I'll come over here to my backdrop tool on the left-hand side again, select the arrow, but this time I'm going to define the scale or the size. Now this you don't have to do, it puts my original horizon line up there if you're wondering what that mark is. Um, this I can do from this point to this point and honestly with a block of my own I will do a couple of measurements and I'll say well no actually that should be 7.5 to try and get it um, as close to the actual size of my block as possible. I could repeat this function, define the scale, and go from uh, this corner to this corner. And I might even zoom in so that I make sure that that's exactly what it should be. And maybe that's really 10 inches and that's a better measurement. But I can play with several of them until I get it the size that I actually want it. Let's say that should be 10.5. Okay, so now I have um, my block sized. Then I don't have to worry about my design fitting on it. So when I pull in a, a design to put on that block, I'm going to fit it to the actual block, not to the size of the backdrop. So if we select a design from our design library, we'll come in. Oh, and I just saw some, got some new designs in here. They're under Shorty Designs. Do, 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 do. Scroll down. Here we go, Shorty. Oh, and it's a new stipple that we have that's called Stipple Mania. Get this thing back out of the way there. And I have lots of different, oh no, that's just my regular stipple. Hmm. Oh. Well, they're on my other computer, so let's try something different. How about um, we can do one of these and pull it in, and then I would resize that to fit this block. Okay, so now when I go to save it when I'm finished, I know it's going to absolutely fit right there in the block. And I may pull it down a little bit here, so it fits just perfect. And if we look at that in 3D, we can see how it will stitch out. And of course, I probably won't use lime green thread on that, but you get the idea. You've got to have your backdrop sized for the purpose that you're doing, especially if it's decorating a quilt block. That's very important um, because otherwise you don't know what size to make your block. Okay, so I'm going to pause right there and just make sure we don't have any questions so far. Are we good to go, Dory? We're good to go on this one. Okay, great. So everybody stayed with me. Good. All right. Let's open up a new file. Uh huh. At this time, why don't you tell them what the benefit of being here is? Oh, um, you know, and and a lot of times, 
um, because we do tell people at our events um, that we tape all of the webinars, which we do, so that they can go back and watch it at their leisure whenever they want. But the benefit of being here live, um, not only is it free, just like watching the recorded ones, but you can ask questions directly to us. We don't um, pre-do questions for these. We take questions directly from our audience. You've got a little space there where you can type in a question and ask anything you want. So with the help of our moderators and myself, um, Dory will pick questions to ask me directly from those. Um, and I, I really never know exactly what she's going to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, I uh, want but you it's to a great opportunity. Uh, we, we are have already had one. She already answered herself because she figured it out. But I'm going to tell you what it is. Our friend Patty What's asked, that? if the uh, if the design can be stitched out, saved as mm -hmm. a Pez. Mm -hmm. But she already knew the answer. She says, never Oh, mind. sure. I see oh, it. Oh, sure. You just. US. Right, right. And if I want to turn off my backdrop so I can kind of look at my design a little bit, then. I would come in here and say file, save as, and go to my formats. I could save this in, in a long arm quilting format if I want to, or as an SVG file if I want to. Um, so I could even draw that on something, <laughs> you know, if, if you want to, or, or send it to your cutter for um, getting creative with things. I can save it as a PES format. We can save in a format for any embroidery machine out there in a stitch format for them. So um, if you are one of those people who collect machines and you have multiple brands, by all means, you are, we got you covered. So whether it's a commercial machine or a domestic machine. And you would just change the format right here. I like PES version 5 or PES 5 because it doesn't ask you to pick a, a uh, hoop size, um, and I'm usually in a hurry to get it stitched out because I'm late to wherever it is I'm supposed to go and give it to someone. <laughs> okay, so that's saving files, and um, you can save it directly to your memory stick or however it is you get them to your embroidery machine. Okay, so let's look up, since we're still in Quilt Embellisher, I want to show you another way that we can use backdrops. And I'm going to select um, actually the same. No, no. I'm going to select another um, file here. Let's do a picture. A lot of times I like to digitize my own designs uh, for quilting, like this fancy fans. Or you get a pattern or in a magazine, or you've got books. Of course, we all have tons of books with quilting designs in them. And we can bring that up as a backdrop. And if I look at this, you can tell this is a pixelated file. Okay, I can see where those little blocks of, of color are that define um, the picture. If I zoom out, it's not quite so pixelated. But I want to make sure I have a solid line. Let me show you real quick. Well, I'll do that when I'm finished here. Let's size it, first of all. We want to make this the size we want it to be. I want this to be 6 inches. So I'm going to put 6 in here and apply that. And now, because I have a backdrop up here, I can use certain tools. Um, I could select my run stitch and come in and just click. And I'm in simple draw right now because I can only draw simple things. Um, <laughs> And by draw, I mean trace. And I could come in here. If For those of you who are good with freehand, you can select different drawing methods. Um, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm already bored doing this. This is not the way I like to digitize. Sometimes I have to. But um, I would rather get more help. And let me just select that little piece that I did right there. You see there's what I did. I've got a long way to go. So I'm going to delete that. What I prefer to do is select my run stitch, and then I don't know if you noticed or not, but up here at the top, it's not on there when it's not selected, okay? But when I select it and I have a backdrop displayed, 
then my magic wand turns on. So I can select my magic wand and come down here and select this um, run stitch. Now, magic wand works a couple of ways. If it's blue, it outlines something. If it's red, it's red work. So I want you to think red wand, red work. That's how I remember it. If I hold the uh, shift key down, you see how my wand turns red on the stem? I want it to be red work. I want it to be a, a, a run stitch through the center of that or make a line through the center of it instead of outlining this. And I'll show you the difference in a minute. So I just click anywhere on that and I let it do the work instead of me tracing through that whole design, uh, tracing over it, which I could, um, and sometimes I have to if I don't have good quality artwork like this where it's a solid line. And this one will read it. Now let me turn off my backdrop. And there you go. I have a run stitch here. Let's look at it in 3D. You can see it a little bit better. And then of course, whoops. And then of course I can select it and change my run stitch properties over here in my properties box. I could make that a bean stitch if I want with seven repeats. And I would probably make, since I really want it to show up, make my stitch length a little bit longer so that there's more thread on top of the fabric. It's not pulled down in it. And apply. And the program will actually simulate that for you a bit. Um, it's thinking about it. Because there's a lot of stitches in that design right there. Uh, we started off with 2,722, and now we're up to 7,700 stitches. So you can see now I've got my longer stitch and um, my design. Now, let's pick a simpler design and do the same thing. And I want to show you the differences. Oops, there's my design back. New page. We'll pick a simpler design so it won't take very long. Let's do this little friendship blossom right here. Do to this one. Um, and select it. Now, the same thing with this one. First we'll size it. Actually, I'm just going to leave it that size. If I select my run stitch and my magic wand and I don't hold the, control, the shift key down to get it to red, then what happens is it will outline that and let's dismiss the backdrop and I have that look which could be a look that might be interesting, uh, but that really isn't what I want to do. So just remember that your wand works two ways, red and blue. Blue outlines and red is for red work. Um, so if I undo that with my unlimited undo button and bring my backdrop back up, and this time hold the shift key down so my wand is red and click on it, now when we dismiss the backdrop, I have a run stitch. Very simple. So we can actually use the backdrop to create things. Another example of this would be to create a block. Do we have any questions on the red work so far, Dory? I'll take that as a no. Um, no, we don't. Not, not okay. yet. Thank you. Oh, okay. yes. Yes, right. one from our friend Patty. Can you smooth out the lines? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, you can. Um, absolutely. Let me go back to that design. Where they're a little bit rough there, you can absolutely smooth those out, which I would. I would come in. This one's actually very small, and my stitches are uh, three millimeters. I might clean this up, um, smoothing them out by clicking on the nodes, maybe making them more curved. Sometimes you get a whole lot of stitches in one place. And mm, this isn't, I'll show you an example in a minute of that and how to clean them up. Because I've, I've got one that it, it does it kind of make it real wobbly. But yeah, you can certainly come in and move the nodes on this and, and straighten it up that way if you choose. OK. Um, sometimes just changing your stitch length is enough to, to fix it. And sometimes. It's not, because if you've got a real long stitch and you're going around pretty tight curves, then you need a shorter stitch to do that where it's pretty. Okay, so um, another way that we can use our backdrop is for applique.
This is one of my favorite things to do. Let me select my backdrop tool and I pulled some blocks in here. Let's select um, this tiled one right here, tile quilt art. Okay, so one thing I want to do is make this an applique. So um, I can select just the color. It's in the backdrop. Well, of course, I'm going to size it first. With my backdrop, I have to have my backdrop selected. This is 8 inches, so that's just fine for me. So I'm going to leave it there. Then I'm going to come up and select my artwork tool. Now, we're going to talk a lot about artwork in the next session, um, in the next webinar next month, but I just want to show you, we have made some changes with the last update, so if this doesn't look familiar to you, then you haven't updated your software. Uh, but I want to show you, I like to default mine to a fill because uh, I can see it better, and, um, or you can do an outline and how opaque you want it. Um, this has to do with the width and pixels that the lines are and all that, which we're not going to worry about right now. Um, we're just going to worry about it being filled at this point. Then I'll come down and select a color, like this blue color, and then I can select my magic wand. Again, I could just come in here and trace around this, like I might with this one right here, boom. Um, but I would have to do the whole corner. Um, so I'm not going to do that. It's easiest, I think, if you have a nice clear picture like this, to just select your magic wand, click on the color that you want to create. And so right now I'm doing the blue. And then I'll change that color to orange. It must be doing a good job because it's taking a little while on this. Uh, and, oh, there we go. So if I dismiss the backdrop, see, there's my all of my blue color. Then I'm going to select uh, right-click on orange to change it to orange. And I can just click again and right-click on yellow and click again. Now, I'll dismiss my backdrop, and all I have to do to make this into an applique is to select everything. I could drag a box around it or use, I prefer to use Control A uh, to select all, and then simply convert to applique using my convert to keys up here or icons up at the top. And there you go. I now have um, it converted to applique. Now, I want to show you they overlapped on these stitches here, um, but I'm going to show you how you can get rid of those. If I turn off my orange color in the sequence view, or the yellow color, sorry, turn it off by clicking the eyeball, then you see I've got stitches going here. I don't really want those extra stitches under that, so I'm going to use my reshape tool and then select the orange and I can come in and just drag around these nodes right here and delete them and when I do that it's not going to get rid of the line so what I have to do is right click at the corner and say split that line then I'm going to right click at this corner on the node and split that line then I can select just this part in there and delete it so that I don't have that overlap. And I would probably go back in and clean that up a little bit right there. We'll see I've got, got that nodes over a little bit. Oh, it's my start and stop. There was a node hiding under my start point, so I'm going to delete that node. And now that's all fixed. Just as easy as that because you don't want to overlap those lines. And I do the same thing with the blue that's underneath um, the orange here. But I'll show you a simple way to do that as well with a backdrop. Um, I wouldn't do it on this one because it was too easy to delete them. But if I have another one, say, like, this is one of my favorite ones to do for t-shirts and for mostly for little boys. I have a necktie picture here. 
click on my next tie and open it. Now, first thing I want to do is resize this. This is about um, an inch and a half by four inches high. I want to make that six inches tall. So in my properties box right here, I change that to six and click apply. Now, I'm just scrolling back out using the roller on my mouse. Now, what I want to do on this necktie is I want the knot to, of the tie to stitch last. I want to do the bottom of the tie first. So I can select uh, my artwork tool, and I'll use my pen and just come in and draw that. Because whenever I convert a solid artwork, to applique, it's going to put a knot under there for me. And then I can, oops, sorry, been working in PEP lately. I don't have to right click. I just click here. And you see now it didn't put it across my knot. So I don't have to go delete those stitches. And then I can just select my artwork and my magic wand. Now see, in, in this, unlike in PEP, I have to get it to artwork and then convert it, select it, and then I'll convert that to applique up here. Now this is one, if I turn off my picture, where it's really ragged, this is how I clean it up very simply, is select it and go to your shape tool, and let's just drag around some of these nodes, and I'll use my delete key and delete them. Right click, and it puts it in place. I'm going to do this, whoops, grabbed one by mistake. I'm going to do the same thing here. See how many nodes it put in there, because it was kind of choppy because of the pixelation in this. Delete those, right click, and it smooths it up. Or I could draw around it. Whatever I, I would, you know, whatever you prefer, there are many ways to, um, accomplish the task, and boy, there's a bunch of nodes there. Now, the number of nodes does not affect the performance of the stitch out, okay? I think there was some kind of rumor going around about that, but it doesn't. Um, it's just where you want your stitches to go or your points to go. So now I've got that all set up. Um, I might fiddle with that a little bit where that's not filling in nicely in the corner um, because of the way the note is, but now it's a much better applique. And it's that simple. So we've done appliques, we've done uh, decorating over a quilt block to, you know, size the quilt block so it's the right size, the applique, the um, quilt designs with the red work and the run stitch tool. Now one more thing I want to show you in here and then we'll uh, take questions and move on to the other programs. Let's open up a new page and I'm going to bring up a uh, another backdrop and this time, let me see where I put it, nope, not in there. I'm going to uh, Where's my backdrops? Uh, come down here and select this log cabin block. Doo, 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 doo. Here we go. And open that up. Now, this is very clear artwork. Um, and of course, you would resize it first at the top, but it's very clear. And you see it's, it, you'd have, you have to go in really far to start seeing the pixels. Um, it was saved from an artwork program as a JPEG. Um, and so it's, it's, very clear and very nicely done. So at this point, I could actually take and create this block, um, select my colors. I'm going to start with blue here, click on my artwork. It defaults to filled and click on my magic wand. I want to create, and I'm just going to do this in two colors for simplicity's sake. Then I'm going to switch to uh, let's do orange and do these three signs. And then I want a green center. Now, from that, I can take and convert any of these into stitches. So we'll make that into one of our stipple stitches. There we go. 
and then I'm going to take the blue ones here and convert those to a different stitch. To do, let's do, ooh, we'll do contour. And this little one in the center, my favorite, shape echo, and we'll do a circle. So, I can decorate that block. Now, in this case is where I might want to either dismiss it and look at it, or I can select my backdrop tool and make it a little bit lighter so I can see my stitches better. Maybe that's too light. Fly right there. Okay, so now you can see the stitches better. So, those are a few of the things that we can do with backdrops in my quilt embellisher. Questions on any of these, Dory? Yes, going back a screen, our friend Gay wants to know, how do you smooth the corners? Oh, well, actually, and this is something that we'll talk about a little bit more with artwork as well, but when you're in the reshape tool right here, where you can see these nodes, uh, when you select it, if you right click on the node, you can change it to smooth or symmetrical or whatever, and it has these little things that come out from it, these little hands or arms that let you calm that down a little bit, and I might just delete that one. So now I have a smoother edge on it. So each of these nodes has different properties as well. In fact, Catherine did a great webinar on this. Um, mm. Artwork 101, I think it was. I'm not sure. And if that's not right, Dory, let me know when Catherine tells you that's not yeah, right. That's, <laughs> but she did. <laughs> when Catherine. Yes, um, because it was really good. In fact, I just watched it recently. Um, it was one that I, I had missed. Um, and it was, it was very good. So she will talk about what to do with all these symmetrical. So even though you don't, maybe you don't have Perfect Embroidery Pro, because all of our programs work on the same platform, a lot of the stuff overlaps. Um, I've done stuff on applique and she's done things on applique. Um, we come at it from different viewpoints a little bit or just the way that we're used to doing it. So by all means, go in and look at the things in, in PEP um, and even WordArt and you might find some things that you didn't know that I haven't gone over yet. So don't limit your um, education to just me uh, by, by any means, because uh, Catherine's a great, great teacher with that. Okay, other questions? Good point. Okay, and can you take these files, which are applique, because um, our friend Linda would like to know, can you send the image to the cutter for, app, for an applique? Absolutely, and you know what, Linda, we do go over that in um, the applique webinar. Um, I'll tell you real quickly that if you take um, your applique, and when you've created your artwork is a good time to do that and save artwork, you could also take this whole necktie um, right here, select the whole thing. Oops, I need to be in my select mode. Um, I'm going to do a control A, and very simply, if I right click and copy that, and right click and paste it, now I have two neckties there, okay? I'm going to convert this one, or, um, sorry, I've been demoing PEP so much, I always want to right click to convert, and I forget in this program, I can just go right up here, I don't have to do that extra step, and just convert it to artwork. Then I can either save it as an SVG file, which would save both things. What I'd prefer to do is come in here and export artwork, and I can export it in an SVG file if you have a silhouette um, or a, a, I can't think of the other name, um, or an FCM for the scan and cut. Um, and Cricket. You're already Cricket, right. Um, and you're ready to go. So, or a W Illustrator or a plotter file or AutoCAD, depending on what kind of cutter you have. So, yes, it's very easy to do that. And it will use the placement line um, when you convert it to artwork. It will convert 
that to the placement line. And the way that our applique works, I don't change the size on it. I make it um, the same size as the placement line because when we do the uh, tack down, which you can see right here, here's my placement line. And then the tack down is inside of it. Okay. When we do that, I can make my fabric the same size as my placement line, and then I know it's going to be covered over, and it'll cut out perfect. I love cutters; they're so much fun. Okay. I know that was fast, but you'll get the idea. Okay, I'm going to switch programs now, and oops, let's <laughs> um, go to my block piecer which is another place that we can use backdrops. It works the same way that it does in Quilt Embellisher and in PEP, um, where you can select a backdrop and bring it up. And this time, let's go back to that same log cabin that is right here. And I'm going to open that. It's 8 inches. I can, of course, resize it. Um, if I want to make it a 6-inch block, I can do that and apply. Now this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm actually going to change colors. Now I could come in and make these the same color as the block, but I don't think that's absolutely necessary. So I, with the block in the background, I'm going to select my artwork. I want to make sure it's a fill because I have to be able to see it. I'm just that way. You don't have to for the purposes of the program, but I think it makes it easier to see what you're doing and you don't end up with two of them on top of each other and not being able to see it. I think it just makes it easier. Select my magic wand and I'm going to click on, well, I'm going to undo that. Um, I'm going to select my color and click, then change color and click. Ooh, those look really good together. Not click, change color, and click, change color by right clicking on the thread down here at the bottom, and click, change color, and click, change color, and click. Now I want to build this block. I want to do this in the hoop. All I have to do is select it and go to my workflow tool and auto build. And there you go. It's already auto-built for me. Look at the preview of the design, and there it is. With everything numbered in sequence and um, so on and so forth. Actually, that's in the sequence it was built. Let's sort the numbers. Yes, because I like them in the order in which I stitched them. And preview now. And there you go. Your design is done. So artwork really is, is very helpful in my block piecer. Um, so you can, I mean, the backdrop is to create artwork to build blocks. And the one where we talk about uh, next month and the following month with the block challenges and um, with artwork, we'll talk more about creating artwork from scratch rather than from a backdrop. Because the key with the backdrops is, of course, that you have to have pretty clean artwork um, because you need to have those patches fit together on the um, page. So if you're doing something like, oh, let's do this one, this, if I come in here, select my artwork tool and my magic wand, and you see where there's fabric here, and I click, here's what we get because that's fabric. <laughs> it's kind of doing this crazy little dance here. This one's pretty filled in filled in fairly nicely, this one is not. So I would want to create that artwork kind of from scratch rather than using the backdrop um, to with the magic wand. I would just draw the artwork myself over the backdrop and use the backdrop as a go-by um, to give me the right size and I know where I want the lines to draw. So that's what I do when I have fabric in my backdrops because you won't get a nice clean image there. Uh, sometimes it's cleaner than others, but you know this certainly is not going to work uh, on that patch. Okay, does that make sense, Dory? Any questions? Nope, no questions, and yes, it makes sense. Can you also okay. rotate this um, backdrop? Oh, oh, sure. We can do the same thing that we did here. Let me just delete that. 
I would come in and define my horizon again. And this time, let's go from point to point here. And it'll straighten it right up. And if you need to do it again, you can. So I always like to have my grid on when I do that, just to kind of check it with my grid and make sure that it's, eh, that one's a little bit off, isn't it? Um, so I would come back in and do it again. Defined horizon. And this time, I may just go on the grid line and say, hey, that's straight. Ooh. And straighten it up. Yeah, that one didn't work. I guess you have to be actually on the picture. There you go. And straighten that up. Now it's much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has to be on the color. So, um, and then of course you can resize it and all of that. So that's what that's how I use my backdrops in Quilt Embellisher. Now, we have a little bit of time left, I mean, I'm sorry, in Block Piecer. We have a little bit of time left, and I want to show you in my quilt planner how to use a backdrop. I like to use it with an entire quilt. Now, I used to do this and occasionally might play with it in Quilt Embellisher, but definitely in um, my quilt planner, I may bring up a quilt as my backdrop, such as this Attic Windows quilt. And actually, I've already done that one, so I'm going to pull it from the library because it will save that with me. It So go to My Quilt Planner, and I'm going to select one of the quilts I have in here. Excuse me. There we go. Um, and... Here's the attic windows quilt. I'm going to pull it in and show the backdrop. Oops. No, nope, that's not the right one. Sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, I must not have copied it over here. We'll do the Irish chain. Okay. And just pull that one in. Okay, and I'm sorry that I am not pulling up the backdrop with that. Hmm. Well, why you're also looking? <laughs> okay, sorry. That's quite a right. Then we'll do, it. We'll, we'll do it from scratch. I've just loaded this onto the new computer, so I don't know if I missed something in the um, process. Well, I was Go going, ahead. I was going to ask you, when you've got a backdrop uh -huh. and you save your file, I have mm -hmm. noticed often when I do it and I open it back up, I don't see the backdrop immediately attached. I have to darken it. Is that correct? Oh, you know what? Maybe that's it. Um, because we have updated since I've, let's see here. If I, nope. Hmm. Nope, I don't have backdrop on it. I don't know what I did on those. Um, so let me show you what we would do. I'm going to take, uh, let's get a quilt back up here. And we'll just do attic windows here. Uh, we'll do Irish chain. That one I know well. Okay. Irish chain. Now you notice that it says here 72 inches by 92 inches. That is the size of the quilt. When it comes in, it's like 8 by 10. So I would set that to 72, and you see it goes up to 91.98 inches. So by 92 inches and apply. Now on my uh, designs, oh no, I know what it is. I'm sorry, I just figured it out. You can't drag it in from the library. Um, I have to open it. So let me do it that way. 
I haven't been playing in the software as much lately, so I'm going to open up Irish Chain. Ta-da! There it is. Okay, <laughs> that's the trick. So, you just learned a good lesson with uh, My Quilt Planner. You have to open the file. You save it as a C2S. Then when you open it, it's there. And if I turn on my backdrop and turn off my quilt, I can see how I've set it up on the backdrop. So I make sure that the backdrop is the same size as my quilt. So when I go into my quilt to compose it, I have the width is my finished width, 72 by 92. My blocks are 10 inches wide and it's in a block shape. I don't have any sashing on here and I have a one inch border um, that has a cornerstone on the corner, which you can't really see in this image here because the numbers covered up. And I could select that to be shorty hooping sequence or not, however I'm going to do it. And then you see your quilt. Normally what we've shown before with this is you don't have a quilt in the background. I like to see what it's going to look like on my quilt. So when I audition designs, for example, let's do this design right here. Um, there it is, right here, this, this, this one. Maybe I want to do a different design on that. So I'm going to delete that and go into my designs, whether it's in the ones that are included with it or with a different design. Then I can load them in, and I really just want a square design here and something None of those are very simple. Maybe I'll try this one. And let's pull it in and fit it to the block. And turn off the quilt grids. And that's kind of interesting, but I'm running into my corners here, so I don't really like that. So I'm going to delete that block. Let's toggle back into our quilt and go to another design and pull it in. So one of our, one of my quilt motifs I have out here, like, hmm, something in here. So you can audition these as much as you want and get exactly the type of design you prefer. Try them out. Here, let's try this one. Whoops. Let me go back to my Irish chain. I double click, which opened up a new one. Let's put that in there and fit it to the block and see what that looks like. Oh, now I may want to just shrink this one down a little bit to fit in there or just say fit it to block and it would shrink it down for me. And then look at it with the quilt and see how I like that. So that's how we use backdrops in Quilt Planner. They're not required, but if you have a picture of your quilt, um, it's certainly a nice way to actually see what the design's going to look like when you stitch them on your quilt. So, question, Story? No, and I want to know that was good because I now understand what the My Quilt Planner is about. Yes, and My Quilt Planner has been our... our um, <laughs> As far as webinars goes, hang in there, girls we're, or, and guys. Uh, we'll, we'll have some more information up for you shortly. Um, the weather has been very cooperative, although it was threatening here tonight. Um, but we've, we've managed to um, stave off the thunderstorms and power issues. So any other questions, Dory? No, not now. Um, oh, yes. Can you do the same things in My Quilt Planner as you do in My Quilt Embellisher from Carol? Um, I'd have to have more specifics on what, what things. Bring up a quilt in the background? Yes. No. Oh, well, yes, you could in, in My Quilt Embellisher. You cannot, you cannot generate any stitches from scratch, like a run stitch, so I can't create my own uh, quilting stitches or red work stitches, um, run stitches. In my quilt and planner. That, in my quilt planner, like I can in quilt embellisher. Okay. 
So it's assuming you've got, actually we're assuming you've got a finished quilt and you just want to audition designs and see what they look like and make them the right size for your quilt and then save them and have a plan to stitch that quilt. Super. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And I hope you all enjoyed my backdrops and learning a little bit more about them. And come back next month and we'll talk about artwork, which is really fun too. Super. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Good night.